nighttime feeding in the great sand dunes of Egypt. Oh my God. Everybody, since I have survived my first snowpocalypse, and I mean real snowpocalypse, not like a half inch of snow and people freaking out and running to the grocery store for no reason, I mean like 70 inches in seven days, I figured I'd do a recap video of what it was like and the lessons I've learned. It is up to my waist. Check this out, the Airstream. It'll be under there somewhere when the snow starts to melt, but I was gonna walk around it, but I don't even think it's safe. And here we were like, oh yeah, maybe we'll get some work done in the winter time, yeah. Oh. Airstream renovation ain't happening until this stuff goes away. I feel bad for her. She looks miserable. Sorry, Airstream. Sorry, everyone. On day one, I wake up to find my car completely buried. I'm attempting to dig my car out of an immeasurable amount of snow, the most snow I've ever seen in my entire life. If you're from the Midwest and laughing right now, I understand, but still, a couple feet, I have never contended with this kind of disaster. So here is my time lapse of what it looked like. It took about 15 to 20 minutes to shovel it all off. Got my powder skis, which is basically the only reason you would live in an area like this. So at least we're gonna have some fun today, right? Here we go, the ultimate test. Can I get the car out? And what I learned here, do not use a shovel on your car because it scrapes the paint. If you're going to clean off your car, you gotta use a soft broom or something like your arm, something that does not scrape the paint. As you can see, we are barely surviving here in the tundra. Also, prepare for a power outage. You never know when this is going to happen, but particularly it's likely to happen when you're getting 70 inches of snow in a few days with high winds. Welcome to my seance. Actually, no, this is not my seance. This is my first real off-grid night in our new country home. I was not prepared for the first power outage out here. I do have a video about that. You can check it out, all my lessons learned, but I'll just generally say here, prepare for a power outage. Really don't want to drop the GoPro in the snow because I'll never find it again. It's been snowing every day for like a week and I think we probably totaled about four feet at this point. You guys know on your face. You guys know on your face. I have never lived in anything like this before in my life. And I'll admit, I don't love it. Snow, unlike rain, doesn't go away. So, whereas living on the other west side of the mountains in Seattle, it rained all the time. The rain went down a drain and the snow does not go down a drain. Hey, Maverick. Yassy. Yeah, it also means I have to feed the horses in this, which is not very fun. It's kind of cold, you all right? Number three, as you can see here, the horses did survive and are doing pretty well, actually, but I learned that you really got to stay on top of the snow with the horse pasture, basically, every few hours if you can, but definitely every day. You should not let the snow build up around the gate because you will not be able to move the gate if you're five foot three and weigh just over a hundred pounds like I do. As you can see here, this is all I got for the gate, mobility. So, hey Maverick, what's up? I am uh, about five and a half months pregnant and can still fit through this little um, hole in the gate, but 
if I were a little further along, it would be pretty tough. So um, I got to dig out, or I should say Lynn, now that he's back from his work trip, is going to dig out several inches of frozen snow because that is essentially what happens is that the snow freezes after things get warmed up. Ah, Maverick! This isn't your show. This isn't your show, Maverick. Every show is Maverick's show, he thinks. You're a weird horse, Maverick. Anyway, snow freezes. It's not always the fluffy, nice, dry stuff that it is when it first comes down. So you should prepare for it to basically turn into concrete. And if you can't move it as concrete, then you should move it while it's dry. And that means staying on top of the snow. Ugh, it's really deep in this pasture. Hey, Seth. Oh, like up to my thighs. Oh. That's the thing about snow. It's really pretty if you don't have to do anything in it. I think people who love snow, like I used to, like just came for vacations and had hot chocolate inside. And then when it's like, no, you have a life that requires walking, shoveling, standing, feeding, all this stuff, snow loses its curb appeal. I actually said to somebody, well, Twitter, somebody Twitter, the universal Twitter, I said, snow is like, imagine you're dating someone, imagine you're dating someone really good looking and they're just a total pain in the ass. Eventually they're not gonna be so good looking anymore. That's snow. carrying hay when you're not carrying it through like four feet of snow. <laughs> oh, I mean, look, I'm up to my oh. mid thighs. Hey, Sassy. You go, girl. Yeah. Hey. Sassy. Oh, I'm sorry I brought you here. <laughs> Maverick. Maverick's always the party pooper who's got to kill, kill all the fun because he can't stand it. And someone else is having fun and he isn't. Right, Mav? He just kicks her out of her dinner or her breakfast. Sassy, you want some of your own? Come on, Sassy. Come on. What are you doing? I know this is gonna sound really odd, but I really, I actually think the horses like the snow. I've been getting a lot of comments on my social media channels about blankets and the concern that I've read about blanketing a horse uh, in these conditions especially is that those icicles you can see on Sassy, when they are on a blanket, when the moisture gets on it and it freezes, they can become really heavy like putting a cold block of ice on your horse. So I've chosen not to blanket her. A lot of people don't blanket out here unless the horse is like really old or really young doesn't have a very good coat but horses at 50 degrees that's what my vet told me get hot so 50 degrees for them is like 85 degrees for us it's it's at the point where our bodies have to start using energy to cool down and so above 50 a horse is pretty hot 30 degrees 40 degrees is actually pretty comfortable for a horse now we're getting colder than that. We're gonna be, actually I think tonight, it might go down to 10. So that's why they have a shelter and everything. But from everything I've read, blankets can actually cause more harm than good because the horse's hair, fur, has its own insulation properties to it and it puffs up and everything and keeps them warm. And so when you press it down, you hurt that air layer that they create. I've been leaving the hay under trees because the snow level is a lot lower under the tree. And then they have these little troughs under their shed covering. Okay. But obviously they're not eating those. I don't know why they don't like the hay under here. They like the snow better, I'm not quite sure. It does look like they're coming here for shelter because I can see their poop everywhere, which I also have to clean up. Speaking of taking care of snow and staying on top of it, my other lesson learned is know your neighbors. Because if you got a neighbor with a huge tractor, 
it makes life a lot easier. This is my neighbor, John, to the rescue, came over and plowed our driveway, plowed my walkway to the barn, plowed outside the front of our house so that I could get out of the door, plowed basically near the airstream, pretty much took care of all of the pathways that lead to the essentials around here. And so we still have a considerable amount of standing snow in certain places, but at least the places that I have to walk to are somewhat clear. And if you look out into the distance, you might be able to see the airstream, which is less buried, but still buried. And then that brings me to another lesson learned, which is if you think you're gonna renovate an airstream in winter in an area where it snows, think again. If you're gonna do that, you need to buy some kind of covering for the airstream or have it parked in a garage, some kind of RV shelter, but you can't have it out in the elements and work on it besides the fact that it's just not fun. Really doing anything uh, outside for long periods of time in this weather, it's just virtually impossible. We barely can access it. It's got lots of weight of snow on it right now, which we need to clear off. And that's gonna obviously impact the, the fact that we can't lift it off of the frame, which is what we were originally planning to do, because uh, that is the next step in our Airstream renovation. So that is going to become an issue. So yeah, winter renovation of an RV. If you're gonna renovate an RV or you buy one that you wanna renovate, ask yourself, where do I live? And how many months of the year am I going to have to work on this? And am I coming up on several months where it may make more sense to buy something that is less in need of repair work that I can live in right away or change your plan so that you don't have to do as much work and let the antique cabinets stay antique instead of ripping them out and putting in new ones, which will slow you back considerably. <gasps> Sassy away. Bye, Sassy. And that brings me to another point, patience. Not something I do very well, something I am certainly learning because when you don't have the amenities of a city, you got to learn patience. It's almost as important as having a shovel or a snowblower or a bulldozer or a tractor or whatever that is. And <laughs> learning how to be self-sufficient and do things for yourself requires patience because A, you may not know how to do everything very well, but also you're probably going to take a little bit longer to deal with certain things like in the snow, just you can't do faster than you would be doing it in uh, drier weather conditions. So I had to learn a considerable amount of patience and I would say along with patience a sense of humor if you can have one of those that helps. This is a snowblower. It has been sitting idle for the last uh, week because I don't know how to use it. So that's the other lesson. If you got a snowblower learn how to use it so it's not sitting idle eating potato chips while you're out shoveling. I'm sure there are many more lessons that I have probably learned subconsciously over the last week or so but I will end with this. The biggest lesson do you want to live this lifestyle? Definitely something to consider as you are perhaps romanticizing like I did. What it would be like to live in a place where you don't necessarily have a city uh, bulldozer tractor plow coming down your driveway. I got stuck yesterday trying to get to a doctor's appointment. I was 15 minutes late. Lynn wasn't here to help. so. Thankfully, a good Samaritan was coming down the road and dug out my car and pushed me, so I made it. But just little things like that that have helped me hone in on where exactly I want to live and how I want to live because we're finally really doing it in a way that before we just kind of dreamed about. So I do think at some point we're probably going to be looking at moving further south in latitude, but for now, I will say, I was looking at some rental houses in other parts of the country where it's sunnier and 
I saw these houses really close to each other and you know, no pastures for the horses and stuff. Cause here I am like, I have escapist syndrome. Like what have I gotten myself into? But as I looked at these houses all crammed next to each other and no horse pasture or anything, it hit me like, I don't want to go back to that kind of living at all. So I'm sure there's a happy medium and we'll get there. But I will say this next step, even after what I went through over this last week was definitely the right one. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.